Here in the studio at Micro Center, we're shooting a lot of video. So that means we have large storage needs. If you remember from our PC build video of our studio PC, we really decked this out with drives. I have about 80 terabytes of storage in this PC. We've been using this mainly for editing, but also for storing all of our videos. Anyone can tell you that one point of storage without a backup is too risky. We also want a better way to share our files. Right now, we've been carrying around hard drives to transfer our files, and frankly, it's a pain. And our file organization is starting to get pretty messy. That's where this guy comes in. This is a NAS, or a Network Attached Storage, from Synology. And this is an easy backup solution that runs on your local network. This can be a central backup solution that will run over our network, which will allow us to access our files from multiple devices, both here on the network and also through the cloud. I have the Synology DS923+, Plus, which is a great network attached storage solution that can be used on a smaller budget than a traditional network server. This is a great budget solution for any small business that needs shared network storage for several employees that need to access the same files. Or you can use this to make your own Plex Media Server for all of your video and music streaming needs in your own home. The DS923 Plus is a four bay enclosure that can fit four traditional 3.5 inch hard disk drives, as well as two NVMe M2 slots that fit NVMe SSDs that can be used as a cache to make this device very quick at reading and writing files to the main drives. One of the things I'm most excited about is this little slot on the back, which allows an upgrade card for a 10 gigabit connection. The ASUS ProArt Z790 motherboard that we're using in our studio PC also has a 10 gigabit connection built in. So we got this network switcher from Netgear, which also has 10 gigabit as well. So we can get full throughput from our main PC to our network attached storage. The high throughput over the network paired with the SSD as a cache, will allow for very good transfer speeds. Today, I have four Toshiba N300 Pro drives, which are 16 terabytes each, as well as a two terabyte Western Digital NVMe drive that I'm gonna use as a cache. The Synology DS923 Plus has an AMD Ryzen R1600 dual core CPU, four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, there's also two RJ45 ports, which are both rated for one gigabit speeds. And then there's the upgrade slot for the optional 10 gigabit card, which is sold separately. There's two USB type A 3.2 ports and an E SATA port, which can be used with the Synology DX517 five bay expansion enclosure. Meaning you can expand this unit with five additional drives for a total of nine drives. That is a lot of storage space. So I have everything laid out here. I'm gonna walk you through the process of installing the drives and setting everything up. And they also give you these little Synology keys so you can actually lock the bays down. But these are actually unlocked right now. So these, you just pop them right open. There you go, it comes right out. So this is what we're gonna mount our hard drives to. So we have four of these. And then you can see on the bottom, there's two slots for our M2s. You can see bay one and bay two. This just pops right off. And then there's gonna be our slot right there. And this just pops right into place. Now, Synology claims that you can hot swap the hard drives into the enclosure, but you don't wanna do that with the M2. That's the only one that you can't hot swap. So you're gonna have to turn that off if you wanna change out the M2 drive. All right, so first I'm gonna start with my M2 drive. I'm gonna put this at the bottom of the enclosure. You see that there's two slots here. I'm gonna put this into bay number one. And this one's actually pretty easy. This just goes at an angle. You press it in and there's a little plastic clip that's gonna keep it down. And that's it, that's all there is to it. it goes right in, super easy. Let's move on to these guys. What we're going to do is we're going to put the drives on and it should go in like this with the connections going in like that. And then you can see that the connector is in there. Yep. They're going to go in just like that. It's going to look a little bit nicer though. So there's a little pull mark here. 
Look at that. Oh, this is super easy. I like it when things are easy. Put this down into the tray. I remove the sides out of here. They just pop right off. The holes are gonna line up on the side and this should just pop right in and hold it right in place. So you can do this with screws if you want. You could do this screwless, it's really up to you. Um, screws are good if it's gonna be like super permanent in the long term, but frankly, with these quick release latches, this is in there pretty good. That's 16 terabytes that I'm trying to shake that's not falling out. So it's in there pretty secure with just the quiz. It's in there pretty secure with the quick release latches. I think that's pretty good. All right, one down, three to go. Just gonna pop these sides right off. Check this guy, line it right up. Get it in place, and then we just pop these right back in. I don't know how they could make this any easier. This is actually really easy. If you're using different size drives, or even if you're using like, let's say two and a half inch SSDs, they will fit in here. And that's what the screws are also gonna be for. You can use the screws to put in those two and a half inches and they'll fit, they'll line up, the ports will still line up with the back. So you can make this into an SSD RAID array if you want, but I'm just gonna stick with these big old HDDs because this is gonna give us a lot of space. And I'm planning on making this into a RAID array Probably like RAID 1. So we'll use two of them and then just have a backup. That was a breeze. So we already have the SSD, which I put into the bottom here. That one's all set. So now I'm gonna start putting the drives in. Uh, the order does not matter right now because these are all just empty drives. So I can put this however I want. I'm gonna start, I'll start from here. Just gonna slide right into place. Yep, so I could feel the connection snap right in. Press that down. All right, we're gonna do the next one. Just line this up. And it's real smooth, this is seamless. So 16 terabytes times four, that's what, 64 terabytes. That's gonna be a pretty good backup. All right, it's all set. Now I'm gonna take this key and I'm gonna use this to just lock them in place for now. So just put it right in, turn it. It's in there pretty secure, pretty snug. I can feel that it made a good connection. I'm gonna put the cover on the SSD. Oh, this is heavy now, but not bad. Let's plug it in, let's fire it up and let's get it ready. This is the Netgear GS110MX. Uh, this is the unmanaged version. You can get the managed version as well, but frankly, this is gonna do exactly what I want it to do. And it's kind of cool because it comes with these little ears that come out the side. So if you want to make this rack mounted, you can. Which now I'm thinking, yeah, I think a rack would look pretty good in here. Because if I put this on a rack, I think it'll help with keeping this nice and cool so it won't overheat. This is fanless, by the way. So you definitely want to make sure you put your switcher somewhere where it's not going to overheat. So I think putting a rack back here is going to be the next thing. But that's a project for another day. Today, I'm just gonna focus on setting this guy up. So I got the power switch for this guy. Then we have the power plug for the Synology. So I'll get this ready. So the Synology came with two ethernet cables, except these are Cat5e. Look at that. Yeah. Nah. I went to my local micro center and I bought some cat seven cables. So this is what I'm going to use to hook this up. Let's get this going. All right. So I've got this guy plugged in, I've got this guy plugged in and powered on. Let's turn this guy on and we're going to get it set up. So I have this running to the 10 G port 
on the GS110NX and I have the PC plugged into the other 10G port because I want to see if I can get maximum throughput right now. So, all right, so they give a link in the startup guide. Hey, oh, look at that. This is so easy. Oh man. All right, so I just put in the uh, HTTP colon backslash backslash Synology NAS colon 5000. And you do that in any browser that you prefer to use. I prefer Chrome. So I entered the link that's in the quick installation guide. I'm on Windows, so I just typed that in, brought me right to it, recognized the device. And now we can just kind of get this set up. Disk Station Manager. So we're gonna download that from Synology and get that all set up. All right, so we're just gonna manually upload the file. All data will be deleted. I understand because there's nothing on it. I won't miss it. All right, cool. So I'm gonna let this run and do the installation. And I'm just gonna sit back and have some coffee. Now there's two fans on this unit on the back here. So these are running pretty quiet, at least to my ears. And this kind of unit you can actually keep on a desk or if you're working, you know, small business and you have some storage needs, you can keep this somewhere easy next to your router and you can access it with any PC that's on the network. I mean, this is a very simple solution for anyone who wants a lot of storage space easily accessible by multiple machines. This unit was, what, $679 plus the cost of each drive. You throw all that together, I mean, you're still looking at about two grand, which compared to a formal networking server, which costs a lot, by the way, especially the installation and the upkeep and everything else, I mean, this is actually a pretty good option. All right, I'm gonna let this run. I'm just gonna kick back and relax. All right, so we can just set this up. I'm gonna set this up with the device name. I'm gonna make an administrator account and password. So let's see. All right, here we go. So we can pick our RAID type. So you can do JBOD, which I'm very guilty of doing sometimes, which means just a bunch of disks. Um, yeah, we're not going to do that on this one. I'm actually just going to go RAID 10. So there we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine our first two drives, and then we're going to have a mirrored backup of those two drives. So that's going to give me a working capacity of about 30 terabytes. Now, I know I said that I have 80 terabytes on this guy. This is just the first backup. So I'm going to make sure that whatever we have that's important on here is going to be backed up on here, and then it's going to be mirrored here. I am going to get the extra five bay enclosure as well to add to this guy. So then we can get a whole bunch of backup. But I think for now, this is gonna be playing it safe. I'm gonna keep our most crucial stuff on this guy and we're gonna have two different copies. So if anything goes wrong with any of these disks, we are gonna have a backup and we're gonna be good to go. We're gonna do a video about different RAID arrays later. I'm gonna cover all of that in depth, but I think for now, I'm just gonna do RAID 10 and I'm just gonna keep it very simple. Now Synology does have drives available that they sell themselves, but they do have a compatibility list for third-party drives. I went ahead and I made sure that these Toshiba N300 Pros are on that list, so they are compatible. Obviously Synology is gonna prioritize their own drives, but the drives we're using are gonna be totally fine. So that's what this little warning is about. All the data is gonna be erased. Uh, well, that's okay, because there's nothing on it. Cool. All right, there we go, 29.1 terabytes. Now this is still gonna be doing its thing. All right, I'm gonna let this run for a minute and let it process. All right, so I let this optimize overnight. It took about 20 hours or so for this to optimize, but the NAS is still usable while it's initializing, basically. Uh, what I did was I set up a test folder, and there's a couple of ways to access this. First of all, you can go into your browser, you can type in find.synology.com, that'll actually pull up your login. You can log into this basically from anywhere. Uh, once you set up the credentials and all the sharing stuff, you can log into this on your browser, which I did here. So you can see the control panel and some of the packages, and you can also see the file station. So I did a test upload and I uploaded a few images and a couple of thumbnail images. And I have this connected to the 10G card here. 
I have this going to the switcher and then I have the studio PC and the 10G port connected as well. So you can actually see on the switcher, it is indicating that both 10G ports are active and we're getting that full throughput. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna do a test and see how fast this can go over the network. Here you can see I've got a bunch of disks here with a bunch of footage, but I'm actually just gonna to go to network and you can see I set up our Studio NAS. And here is the folder where I'm gonna put my stuff. So I'm gonna go find a test folder of what I wanna transfer. I'm thinking, why don't we take the footage from this actual shoot and I'll just drag this over and let's see how fast this goes. So this is about 80 gigs or so, and we're getting 530 megabytes per second. Not bad, it's saying about two and a half minutes or so. So remember, we put a two terabyte NVMe SSD into this guy, so that's gonna act as the cache. So all of this is actually writing to that SSD. Then it's gonna get backed up to the first two drives being mirrored onto the second two drives. So it's only 30 terabytes that's getting mirrored, but this is gonna be our main backup for a lot of the important stuff that we have sitting on this studio PC. So we always have our backup and then our backups backup because one copy is never enough. What I really like about this system though is that I can create credentials for everyone on my team and we can access these files from anywhere. So I can go and I can create a username and an access password they can log in on the portal on any browser. You can access the files or folders, or you can keep it restricted. So if you only wanna share certain folders, you can share those. So if you wanna deliver files to someone, you can use this as sort of a Google Drive, except it's a Google Drive that you own. So you're not paying a monthly subscription. So this is still going, but it's holding strong. It's been going anywhere from about 450 to 530 megabytes per second. And again, I mean, this is only an 80 gigabyte test. If I was gonna do a really big backup and we fill up that two terabyte you know, cache, then yeah, it's gonna slow down tremendously. But a majority of the stuff we're gonna be moving, it's gonna be smaller than two terabytes. So we're never really moving more than two terabytes at a time. So that's fine. All in all, this is a really good system. I highly recommend getting the 10G card for this system and having either a PCIe slot with a 10G network adapter or a motherboard with the 10G built in. That's gonna give you the best throughput. Make sure you use a network switcher that also has 10G as well. But that's gonna give you the best throughput from your system to the NAS itself. Now, going to the internet, which I have running here on this port, you're only gonna get 1G speeds. You're gonna be limited by your internet service provider. So whatever you're getting in terms of internet connection, that's gonna be your limiting factor. But the fact that I can access any of these files whenever we travel is really handy because there are times where we forget uh, certain files that we need for editing or maybe there's a template that we have that we forgot to bring with us on our computer. Well, guess what? I can just access that from anywhere in the world. All I have to do is go into my browser, type in my credentials, and I can access my NAS really, really easily. They also have apps and authentication apps that you can get for your phone, so if you wanna give anyone access, you can do that as well. There's a lot of options that you can do with this guy and it is expandable. So you can add five additional bays with more hard drives, meaning you can get a ton of storage. So you can back all of your stuff up and access it anywhere. Now, if you're running a small little studio like we are here, it's an amazing solution for all of your data storage needs. But remember, this is also great if you have a small business, if you have a team that always has to share all of their files and pull them together, and you can set this up to schedule and back up things from the computers that you have on your network. If you have a Plex server, if you have a lot of video and audio files that you wanna run locally, all the storage you need, right here. So if you're looking to step up your home storage needs or the needs of your small business, make sure you check out the Synology DS923 Plus. You can check it out at your local micro center and make sure to talk to one of our networking associates about all of your networking needs. And if you do not have a micro center near you, make sure you comment hashtag, I want a micro center near me.